This program is being sponsored by the partners and friends of Keith Butler Ministries. Today on Live Your Faith. Amen. You're in that kind of predicament. You're going to be like what she is. She's thinking about her son and herself. And that's it. And what's the prophet's word? Verse 13. Fear not. That's a word to some of you too. Seeking to reach the continents with the word of God. Teaching the Word, doing the work, and touching the world. This is the Live Your Faith broadcast with Bishop Keith Butler. Praise God. Yes, there's the law of the seed, and the law of the seed works. It's been working all your life, as we learned a little bit about it on last week. And you know, Romans chapter 8, verse 2 says, The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the seed is attached to other laws, and you'll find out about it more in this broadcast in the name of Jesus. And the Lord didn't say I'm talking about people. You know, the Lord's kind of cryptic sometimes. He is. He's kind of cryptic sometimes. You know, because uh, I've, over the years, I've noticed he doesn't always say everything. He'll just do what he did here, and he'll just tell him that phrase. Now, the Lord's talking about people. Amen? Peter right now is still, still thinking. He's thinking he's talking about what you eat. Amen? What's Peter going to have to do? He's going to step stay on that housetop for a while. See, just to get to understand, a lot of times when we read stuff in Scripture, we think stuff happens the very next second Amen. or the very same day. And many times, there are days, weeks, hours, months between events. In fact, the Bible says about Jesus, of all the things that he said and did were written in books, the libraries couldn't hold it. So what you get is you get a portion of what, the God, what God's trying to get, you, get to you. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm saying that is that, praise God, this is going to go on three times. Verse 16 Three times, thrice. In other words, sometimes we don't get it the first time. Sometimes we don't get it the second time. Sometimes we might get it the third time the Lord starts talking to us about something. Amen. That is if our heart is honest. Sometimes we do get it, we just ain't going to do it. That's a whole different. Oh, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. But he does it three times, praise God, finally. And so now Peter's still down. What did this vision mean? And then right about that time, the three guys who left Cornelius' house that was, was sent because God told Cornelius to that angel, I got your answer. And the answer is a, a man's got it. And the man's over here, over in Joppa. So send men over there. And you know the answer the Lord may have for you may be through a man. In fact, sometimes the answer might be through a child. Amen. Amen. I've told you the story. I'm not going to get on it much, but I told you a story. I, I, I came here and my body was sick one day. We had school over there on the other side of the building. And my body was sick, but I came, came to work anyway. Praise God. I'm, I'm confessing the word. And I came in. I dragged myself in. I came in that door that day where those kids were. Amen. They all lined up, you know, for a bathroom break or lunch. I don't know which it was. But they all lined up single file in little uniforms, you know. And I walk, I walk in there and I see this, you know, these kids, you know, and I, the kids always, you know, always excited to see me, you know, and, and all that. And, and the one little girl, she said to me, she said, and you know how kids like to talk with their face? There's some grown folk who still talk with their face, you know. But, you know, because what's the matter, Pastor? You know, I must have looked bad, you know. <laughs> she said, what's the matter, Pastor? And I looked down at her little cute thing. She's so cute, you know. And I didn't think she was going to know what I meant. I said, well, honey, I'm just, taking, I'm just taking a little healing right now. And she straightened up like, what? And she attacked my body. Come out of hell. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I got instantly healed. Five years old. Your answer may be something and from a direction you don't see coming. God specializes in getting answers to you 
in ways you don't see coming. Don't try and pigeonhole God and put him in the box. It's got to happen this way. got to come from this direction. I can't see how. The fact that you can't see how is good. That means you can't get no glory from it. Because you didn't know what was going on. Mm. <laughs> Finally, the Spirit said in verse 19, three men seek you. Go with them. Don't even doubt. Yeah? <laughs> Praise God. In the meantime... Since my man Cornelius had got a word from God, he got ready for the answer. Amen. What did he do? Verse 20, 24. He called together his kinsmen and his near friends. Amen. He got a word from God. He sent the man and he expected. And guess what? Cornelius is still a giver. He don't want to get the answer for himself alone. He wants other people to get blessed just like he's going to get blessed. He gets his kinsmen and his near friends, and then Peter arrives there, and in verse 38, he begins, Peter begins to preach that famous message, and Peter is not supposed to be there with these Gentiles. But he heard from the Lord, and thank God, when you hear from God, you got to forget about man's rules. Amen. Verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And verse 44 says, and while Peter spake, the Holy Ghost fell on everybody that heard the word. His, all his relatives, all his friends, and they had a circumcision. The Jews, they were all astonished because what was poured out on the Gentiles was the same thing that was poured out on them. The Holy Ghost, how'd they know? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Next chapter, people, Peter gets in trouble. They take Peter and they get on Peter's case for speaking to these Gentiles. And Peter said, who am I to stand up against God? Amen. Glory to God. What opened the door? Cornelius' prayer. Cornelius' seed. A seed can meet any need. Then in 1 Kings chapter 17, glory to God. Glory to God. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. We read verse 1. Elijah the Tisbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be due no rain these years, but according to my word. Think about that. And remember, you're talking, you're talking to people who are farmers. This is, we're talking about people who grow their own food. Now, today, most of us do not grow our own food. And actually... Might be better if we did. I'm going to leave that one alone. But notice, praise God, not only is it not going to be rain, there's not even going to be dew. And then note the words, years. In other words, there's going to be a drought for years. Why did this happen? Even though they were covenant people, what happened was they began to worship other gods. When they began to worship other gods, they opened the door, they put themselves under the curse, and this is the result. What God's taking care of the prophet of God, the prophet of God's going to went and do with the instructions the Lord gives him, but eventually he's going to send him to a river, but eventually that brook or river dries up and there's no more rain, verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. I know the first time I remember reading this, I'm thinking about, okay, so he's got a widow woman there. She's a widow, but she's got, she must be a rich woman. She's going to take care of herself. She's going to take care of the prophet. It's going to be for years. Amen. Amen. And so, praise God, she must be very wealthy. So he arose and went to Zarephath. He did what he was supposed to do. Came to the gate of the city. Behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray, you a little water in a vessel that I may drink. <laughs> hmm. Now, again, you need to read the Bible like, like this really happened. I mean, I doubt, I said it this morning in the earlier service, 8 o'clock. I said, I doubt that just some man walked up to Pastor Durbin and said, go get me some water. She go do it. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I just came from Ukraine ministering for a week of meetings there in Kiev. Amen. And uh, they speak Russian. Amen. And they have a word in Russian for that. Yet, no, <laughs> I pretty sure what she would say. Some guy that walked up said, "Go, you, go, give me some water." She would say, "No." 
right? Mm -hmm. Somebody just walked up off the street. Amen. At least he could have been nice about it. Hello, how are you? Such and such. Done, done something for the woman. He just he sees her. He walks up and says, and now let me tell you from his side. His side is going, God told me your job is to take care of me. So get to doing. <laughs> All right. Go get me some water. Let's keep on reading here. And as she's going to get it, he calls, hey, hey, hey. And by the way, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand, too, when you come back. <laughs> and she says, now, as the Lord God's alive, I don't, I don't have a cake. I just got a, just a little hand, handful of meal and a little bit, a little jar, and I got a little oil in a vase. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and fix a meal for me and my son that we can eat our final meal and die. What is wrong with this picture? Didn't God say to this man, to the prophet, this woman is going to be the one that sustains you through this drought for years. And when he gets to the woman, tells her to bring me a cake, she says, this is the last little bit we got to eat. In fact, we eating our last meal, me and our son. Note she didn't include him. Me and my son. <laughs> right there in the book. Right? And we're going to die. I guess she had enough of his attitude, right? <laughs> Something wrong with this picture. Okay, amen? You mean God would send you to a source that seemingly doesn't have any money? I know when we were in Bible school, amen, we went head over hills in debt, totally, completely in debt, debt to here. Amen. God had me leave my good job, best job I ever had in my life, if I stayed at that job long enough, the debt would have got handled eventually in years. Would have got handled eventually, right? He told me to quit, go to Bible school. Here I am in Bible school, and we're sitting there head over heels in debt. I know what it means to feel like, feel that. And in fact, what's happening is that these little companies are trying to garnish my little check because I ain't got no money. I mean, this is what we used to do. We used to take, shit take, we used to take the bills, put them in a paper bag, shake them up, reach in there, whoever I pull out, that was who we got paid that money. We didn't. <laughs> True story. So, I mean, you would think, okay, that what God's going to send him to is somebody who's not in that kind of predicament. Okay, amen. You're in that kind of predicament. You're going to be like what she is. She's thinking about her son and herself, and that's it. And what's the prophet's word? Verse 13. Fear not. That's a word to some of you, too. Yeah, things might be a little skinny right now, but don't fear. Don't worry about it. Tell three people, don't worry about it. Refuse to worry. That's the first thing. Don't open the door with doubt and fear to the enemy. Don't worry about it. He told her, fear not, because that's what she was doing. Go and do as you have said, but make me therefore a little cake first. and Bring it unto me, and then, then you can make for your son and yourself. Man, that mean prophet. <laughs> hey, good God. I mean, look. <laughs> he said, now, don't you worry about it. Don't fear. You go ahead and you make a little cake. But first, you make cake for me. Now, she just told him, I ain't got but a little. And he says, you make a cake for me first, then whatever's left over you and your son. Boy, that sounds like a mean prophet. He sounds like a selfish prophet, doesn't he? Joe does, right? They would call him selfish today. In fact, I can see CNN right now. <laughs> National prophet takes last meal of woman who's dying with her son. News at 11. Absolutely, that's what they would say. Right? Praise God. Well, now this woman's got a choice. Because what's been put in front of her is whether or not she takes what she has and seeds it, or whether or not she eats it. Let's see what happens. Verse 14, here's the word of the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that barrel meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. 
Now, the barrel of meal waste means that I'm not going to put nothing in your hands. You're going to have to take what you got and you're going to have to use that and believe that the next time you go back, it'll be refilled. So she still ain't going to have no evidence in her hand. Come on, somebody. Amen. Except every time that she goes, hallelujah, hallelujah, it'll be there again. We never had a dime in our pocket when we went to school, but when we graduated, all our bills were paid. Every month, some kind of way, the money showed up. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. So what did she do? She chose. She went and did. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And many days means at least minimum a full year. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cool cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord. She spake unto Elijah. So every time she emptied that, every time she emptied that, that little jar, and every time she used what that little oil, and they ate that, and they went and did whatever they did. When they came back, it was refilled. And you may, not, you may not have a dime in your pocket, but that don't mean that you have nothing. The bottom line is not what you got in your pocket. The bottom line is, is the bill paid. Oh, the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, turn to Luke chapter 4. Amen. This time of thanksgiving to God, because God always gives seed. Everybody has seed. Amen. We didn't have no money, so our seed was pencils, cheap earrings. Amen. Whatever we had in our hands. They had no money, so we put stuff in there. That's all we had. Amen. Amen. The deacons at their church probably wanted to open or off an envelope, and there's a pencil in there. <laughs> what the? <laughs> but it's all we had. Okay, amen. amen. Praise God. Well, now, now here in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is speaking in verse 24. Let's hear what Jesus had to say. He said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is... is acceptable or except in his own country. But I tell you the truth, many widows were in Israel in the day of Elias when the heaven was shut up. See that? Many widows. There were a whole lot of widows. Many widows in the day. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months, it was three years and six months that how long that drought was. When great famine, famine, everybody has nothing. Was throughout all the land. But unto none of those other widows was Elijah sent except Sarepta, the woody woman of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Just that one woman. Why was that? She was the only one willing to sow in the midst of famine. So when everybody else starved, she always had enough. Oh, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Hallelujah. Then turn to 2 Kings chapter 4. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. Praise God. A time of receiving, a time, praise God, of thanks, a time of giving. God gave the first man. God gave the next generation. God gave through the Messiah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God is still giving. You're breathing his air right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 4. Praise the Lord. Verse 8. Fell on the day that Elisha passed to shoot him. There was a great woman. That term great woman means a very wealthy woman. A very wealthy woman. So money is not her problem. She constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat. She said to her husband, look. This is a holy man of God. He passed by us all the time. Let's make him a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, which means let's make him a, his own room in the house. Let us set for him there a bed in it, so we know it's a room, a table, we know it's a room, a stool, we know it's a room, a candlestick, we know it's a room, and it shall be when he come to us, he shall turn here. He don't have to go down to the village inn. He can turn in with us. 
It fell on the day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. He's laying in that bed chamber. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, called the Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and he, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Look, you've been careful for us with all this care. What's to be done for thee? Why you ask this question? Even then, he understood that if somebody did something for you, you ought to do something for somebody else. Or well, at least it's the person who did something for you. Come on, somebody. And so he speaks to her. You want me to speak to the king for you or to the captain of, of the army for you? She answered, no, I'm just going to stay with my own people. He said, well, what's then, what's then to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, because she's, she's not going to answer. He said, truly, she has no child and her husband is old. So she's barren. She must not be old. Okay, amen. But you know how old you got to be for the Bible to call you old? There's some old folk in the Bible, man. I'm <laughs> and Gehazi recognized that she must be a one young woman, all right. She said, he said, yeah, but she, 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 had, she don't have any child, but her husband is no way. The boy can hardly walk, more or less take care of that business. Forget about it. <laughs> right? Verse 15, and he called her, and when he called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. She said, no, yet. <laughs> Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, don't you lie unto me. In other words, haven't you seen my husband? <laughs> and the woman conceived. I wouldn't say she was a model of faith, not at this point. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elijah sent unto her according to the time of life. Her and her husband's seed opened the door for a miracle to happen upon his body. But there's more to this story. And when the child was grown, the child grew up and fell on the day, he's out there with his daddy in the field. So you know, he ain't not a little chike, he's out there in the field. And he said to his father, my son, uh, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mama. When he had taken him, he brought him to his mother. He sat on her knees till noon, and then he died. Oh, my God. Now, I don't care if you're talking about mama or daddy. For the child that you have and that you raised to lay across your knee, it wouldn't matter if it was Deborah's knee or mine. One of my children would have died on my all you need to do is ask Jesus into your heart. Romans 10, 9 says, if you will acknowledge with your mouth, Jesus as the highest authority in the earth, believe in your heart, God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Pray that prayer right now, he'll come into your heart, and you'll never be the same. Getting ready for a day at the office? Are you babysitting the children today? Before you do anything, you're invited to spend a few minutes of your day in the scriptures with Keith Butler. Fresh water. Available for $8.95 in paperback or $4.99 ebook. Order your copy today. Overseas Missions Initiative. Praise God, this is Mission Sunday. And we thank you again for your continued support to Word of Faith and KBM as we do our mission work overseas. And we're going to minister to the French people. Praise the Lord. We're going to share God's Word with them, and you help us do it. We're taking a team over there, praise the Lord. It may cost a lot of funds to do it, but on the other hand, getting people into the kingdom of God, introducing them to the Word of God, and maybe even some of them may become members of our online church. Then, of course, in the months coming up, praise the Lord, we go to Ukraine. We're going to be ministering over there to the people of Kiev. And, of course, they have a lot of things they have to deal with. And so, uh, once again, what you do in helping us with KBM is vitally important to teach the Word do the work, touch the world, to complete the mission the Lord told us to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every preacher. Thank you. And us and God together, tied together, we are a majority. Even if it's just the two of you, against a whole multitude, when God is with you, you are not a minority. You are a majority. You are not 
limited. Vous n'êtes pas limité. God is on the inside of you. Habite en vous. He is the richest in glory. Il est votre richesse en gloire. By Christ Jesus. Par Jésus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, Keith Butler Ministries is truly teaching the word, doing the work, and touching the world. Praise God. The Bible said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And as you can see from our intro, we're ministering in Europe, we're ministering in Africa, many other places, praise God. We're taking the word of God, East Europe, West Europe, praise God. And you know, God wants everyone to hear the word. That happens because people partner with us. They become people who support what we do. And if you want to see the gospel go beyond just your neighborhood, praise God, and go to people around the world with the heart of God, then we want you to pray about being a partner with us here at Keith Butler Ministries. We want to thank you for your prayer support. And remember now, keep fighting the good fight of faith. The lives of many people are being changed dramatically through the works of Keith Butler Ministries. People who have never heard the message of faith preached are hungry for God's word. We're ministering at a ministerial conference. We have pastors and their staffs from all over Europe, from Portugal, from uh, Eastern Europe, Central Europe, Western Europe. Praise God, we're having a great time in ministering to them. They're learning a lot. Anytime you minister to pastors, you're ministering to their audiences. And so we're ministering then to hundreds and maybe thousands of people. It's because of your support. And thank you for your support at KBM. We're building the kingdom of God. The focus of KBM Youth Missions Initiative is to expose our youth uh, to missions at an early age. I also am here because I just love God so much and I want to show um, the whole world how much God loves them as well. And you got so much to live. Yes, Keith Butler Ministries is truly teaching the word, doing the work, and touching the world. Was today's program a blessing to you? What you heard was only a part of this powerful message. You can order the entire service today on CD, DVD, MP3, or MP4. Simply visit us anytime at our e-store online at www.keithbutler.org or call us at 1-888-909-9673. Order today for yourself, a family member, or a friend. And let the Word of God begin to work in your life right now. Get connected. Check out our live stream, Church Online, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To get connected, go to KeithButler.org. This program was brought to you by the friends and partners of Keith Butler Ministries.